Good day fellow investors. Today we are going to discuss a stock that I have received a lot of questions about, so it is appropriate to do a video about it. We are going to talk about General Electric. It is a company that hasn't had such good times in the last 12 to 16 months, so it is appropriate to see what is the intrinsic value, what's left there, to see what's the risk and reward in investing. Whenever you approach a stock that has fallen, what was it, 60% in the last year, there is always to watch the risk, the fundamentals. Has it hit its own fundamentals where it would become undervalued if it goes below her? And what's the potential upside in the next two or three years? Because usually investors tend to really focus on the short term, replicate the short term into the long term, and from there derive a value, an intrinsic value of a stock. We'll try to look at a little bit longer perspective, look at the value in the balance sheet, if there is any, and see what would be a risk reward scenario when investing in General Electric, and if it is a good investment now. First, let's see what happened. In the last five years, you can see the stock is down 33.20% as I'm filming this. However, the biggest decline has happened in the last year, year and a few months, as the stock went from above 30 to the current 15. However, General Electric is a blue chip stock, which means that it has history, it has the market's confidence, it pays a dividend, so it's always attractive to a lot of investors. And if you are a broker, you can sell GE to clients. That's relatively easy. It has a brand, it has everything. So let's see at the intrinsic value, which will come out not in one number, but in a range of numbers. As would Buffett say, I prefer to be vaguely right than precisely wrong. Intrinsic value, of course, present value of the future cash flows that will be distributed to investors. However, perhaps even easier is to see what will be the average future cash flows attach a valuation to that and then you get an approximate number of what would GE's intrinsic value be. Operating cash flows have been very high, 13 billion almost in 2016, down to 11 billion in 2017. However, what you want to look at is free cash flows and those are expected to be in 2018 between 6 and 7 billion. So free cash flows that will be available for dividends or who knows acquisitions depending on what GE take there. If I attach a cash flow valuation of 10, that gives me a return of 10% as an investor on what I invest, I get an intrinsic value between $6.8 and $7.9. However, if I attach, let's say, a market valuation to those cash flows, so a 20, let's say 20 price to cash flow, price to free cash flow, I double that value. So we get from 13 to somewhere 16 would be an intrinsic value from the current cash flows. If General Electric manages to reverse its fate, improve the margins, improve the profitability and grow in the future, then that intrinsic value might also increase. And what's very important to note with intrinsic value, it really depends on you. It depends on the rate of return, what you want to see from an investment, the business return, the earnings return. If you expect 10%, the price to free cash flow will be 10 for you. If you expect 5%, the price to free cash flow will be 20. If you compare your investments to the market, that's something very tricky. What if the market falls 50%, then you are definitely wrong. So I prefer to invest from an absolute perspective rather than from a relative market perspective because it doesn't matter if something is 20% undervalued from the market when it is still 50% overvalued from its intrinsic value that gives me my required return on investment. Now the main question for GE is how will those cash flows evolve in the future? As you can see GE is in the right sectors that will probably do well in the future. Power, renewables, healthcare, aviation. All those sectors will see growth in the future, will see also competition. Nevertheless, GE, market leader in many of those sectors, there might be cyclicality, there might be upturns and downturns, but we can estimate some growth there. There are also some that I think bad sectors like the Baker huge acquisition, something like that, but 
okay, nevertheless, we can expect some growth. So if General Electric manages to bring the free cash flow available to shareholders to let's say an average of 10, perhaps even 15 in the long run, however, that would be 15% of revenues, which is a little bit high. So let's say 10 billion, then the fair value for me would be 10 for the market would be still 20. As the markets are going, as there will be probably a correction or bear market in the next year, two years, perhaps it's better to wait for GE to, to be closer to 10 or even in single digits before investing. Because looking at cash flows, looking at other issues that could happen, the stock could go even lower. The lower the price, the lower is the risk. That's a simple investment truth. One of the things that can happen is that GE is forced to do more impairments. In 2015, it acquired Alstom. However, many think that that acquisition didn't lead to what GE expected, as General Electric expected a 15% return on investment, but the return is in the single digits. So there could be more impairments to the goodwill. If we look at General Electric's goodwill, we can see that it has been piling up in the last years thanks to all of those acquisitions that it made. And you can see how due to the Alstom acquisition in 2015, it went from 50 billion to 60 something billion. So impairments of 10, 20 billion, Baker Hughes or Alstom or whatever, there will be probably in the future impairments. Those are not a cash expense, however, might lead to trouble and re really put more negative pressure on General Electric stock. So such kinds of impairments might present an opportunity because you as an investor, you look at the future cash flows. What happened in the past is unfortunately a sunk cost. It isn't nice, but what is on the balance sheet doesn't really matter to future cash flow. So if they impair it, okay, it's a one time hit hasta la vista and they can go on. If that is a trend that, that they will impair everything and then there will be credit concerns because of the lower balance sheets, that is the problem of credit rating at agencies and how they view a balance sheet. Because if they have to wait for an impairment to say that something is less valuable, they are really incapable, that's it. Nevertheless, let's look at the book value. Unfortunately, if we if we impair the goodwill and intangible assets, that can be questioned. There is no value in GE for the shareholder. So if there is turmoil, if creditors get scared, and you can see that there is a lot of liabilities, 81 billion in liabilities directly attributed to General Electric, not GE Capital. So there could be really issues with General Electric, which would create a better investing opportunity because in the long term, perhaps the sectors, the technology, the growth, the brand might prevail. Just a quick look at return on invested capital. Average return over the last years, five years, 3.77%. When things go well, it is, a, it is around 4.5%. So this is what you can expect for this company in relation to growth in the future. So to conclude, if General Electric would be valued as the market is valuing other companies now, if there is an uptick in revenues, in profits, in improving margins, if things go well and things stabilize, then you can see it again at 30, like it was 15 months ago. However, from a value perspective, from an investment perspective, from a long-term investment perspective, where you look at the business, the value of General Electric is between eight and in a good case, 15, 16, which is again the price now. So I would really wait for eight. There will be other investments opportunities. And at eight, we will look again at GE and say, okay, now it might be a good investment. If there is a series of negative news, if there is a market correction, I think we could see it at eight and then buy it at a 50% discount from current prices. Just an example of what can happen the recent SEC investigation that could lead to more accounting questions and of course impairment because that's a big company accounting can be really questioned and if there is a short attack that attacks the accounting you can really see lower prices even if accounting and impairments don't change the actual business the actual business just continues as is so General Electric from my perspective is now speculative because it is 
close to its intrinsic value, but the hope if you invest in it is that it gets fairly market value, which a lot of good things have to happen, but there could also be bad things that happen that lower the price. So the risk reward is equal, it's not asymmetric. So wait for lower prices for the investment to be in a positive asymmetric risk reward with high rewards and low risk. Thank you for watching, looking forward to your comments. What do you think about the GE? Let's create a discussion so that we all learn together and we add value to each other. Thank you, I'll see you in the next video.